Hello, my name is Peter Douglas and I'm the CEO of the International Power Access Federation, IPAF. Welcome to our webinar, coinciding with the launch of our 2023 Rental Market Reports. Firstly, I would like to thank our sponsor for this webinar, Palizani. Thank you very much, guys. This is the 14th year that IPAF has produced in conjunction with Ducker Carlisle, our Powered Access Rental Market Reports. As with last year, the reports will focus on North America, the top 10 European rental markets, and a special focus on China. Continuing from last year, IPAF members that are rental companies, manufacturers, dealer, distributors, and suppliers can claim the relevant rental report free of charge. Simply order one at ipaf.org forward slash reports. So you're going to hear shortly from Ewan Hudale, editor of Access International. Ewan will give his invaluable and unique insights into the world of powered access rental, looking at the different trends across all of the global regions mentioned. Then you will hear from Jana Rova, Senior Market Analyst at Ducker Carlisle. Jana will go through the key findings from one specific market, and we're focusing on Germany this year. We're going to do a bit of a deep dive into this individual country report. This will hopefully give you a good understanding of the information held within these country reports, and that it is very valuable to you for lots of reasons, including investment decisions, benchmarking against your competitors, and against the whole of the market within those particular countries and regions. It will help you see the trends and forecasts with a view to helping you budget for the year ahead. Before I hand over to Ewan, I would like to introduce a video from our sponsor, Palazzani. Thank you. Hello, and thank you to IPATH for inviting me to take part in this webinar. The global access market is as dynamic as ever, with huge growth opportunities in emerging markets that are on the cusp of taking off. There are, of course, a range of factors that are creating challenges, including the ongoing issues around supply chains, the war in Ukraine, tariffs imposed on China-produced products entering the USA, and China's yet to mature access market. However, the situation has certainly improved since the toughest days of the pandemic, and a clear message now is that the international market has changed, and that change is accelerating. 
Access International's annual access, access M20 listing of the world's largest access equipment manufacturers, which is ranked by revenue, saw a steep drop in 2020. For the first full year of the pandemic, some manufacturers based in Europe and North America reported a fall in revenue of as much as 40% in that year. But that drop would have been even steeper if it were not for the appearance of the major China-based China manufacturers that really started establishing themselves in the listing in 2019. Between 2020 and 2022, those Chinese manufacturers reported growth of up to 90% year on year. Their global ambitions are clear, and we will speak about the China influence more. However, they were not the only ones showing signs of strength. The biggest revenue drops in 2020 was largely among the established European and North American manufacturers of scissors and boom lifts, used in construction activities to a significant degree. The manufacturers of specialist access equipment, uh, like uh, vehicle mounts for the utility uh, sector and um, spider lifts, uh, which are mainly based in Europe, remained strong throughout the pandemic. This equipment used for essential services, including maintenance, saw continued demand throughout the COVID years. Such was the strength of those equipment types during the pandemic that we have seen consolidation in these sectors over the last couple of years, particularly among the utility and specialist vehicle mounted access providers, again, mainly in Europe. Again, I will consider this changing landscape as we go along. So onto individual geographical markets. We start in the USA, where the economy is strong in comparison to other global markets, as is demand for access equipment. One thing getting in the way of this are the lead times for equipment, with companies still reporting significant backlogs. Despite indications they may be improving through the work carried out to optimise production and relationships with suppliers, it may take the rest of this year or longer to sort out. The American Rental Association struck a word of caution earlier this year. Following 2022's vibrant equipment rental markets across the USA and Canada, it said the construction and industrial industries should prepare for limited revenue growth this year. And it said the infrastructure bill introduced in 2021, which is set to inject up to $1.2 billion into related projects, uh, said that the impact will not, of that will not be fully felt until 2020. Despite this, manufacturers based in the USA have reported strong revenue growth in the first months of this year, thanks to continued demand due to rental companies aging their fleets during the COVID pandemic and the ensuing supply chain issues. It means manufacturers in North America are reporting 35 to nearly 50% growth in mute and telehandler sales for the first quarter of this year. Tele telehandlers are taking the lead in this, thanks partly to the US infrastructure bill which is resulting in even more applications for telehandlers. In turn, rental companies in the USA are increasing their capital expenditure and looking to get hold of much needed kit in any way they can. One way of doing this is by acquiring other rental companies. Therefore, consolidation between rental companies is no longer just about expanding into new ge geographical and business areas, but it is an alternative way now of buying equipment. For example, a major acquisition in the US this year was that of Ahern Rentals by the world's largest rental company, United Rentals. One major effect on manufacturers exporting to the USA has come from the tariffs imposed on MUPs exported to the country from China. Last year, the US Department of Commerce imposed tariffs ranging from 12% to nearly 450% on access equipment produced by manufacturers in China. This did, this did not just affect Chinese manufacturers, but also European and North American companies producing equipment in China that, it deli that is delivered to the US. This leads on to the subject I mentioned before about the changing access landscape. The manufacturing footprint in North America has started to adapt to the times. We now see a considerable move by major North American and Chinese manufacturers to set up factories in Mexico, and that trend is very much likely to continue. This is not just to avoid the tariffs on goods produced in China, it is also the result of an increasing cost in labour in the USA and Canada, as well as an increasing shortage in labour. In addition, since COVID, manufacturers are seeing the advantages 
of manufacturing as close to markets as possible. That means local production surrounded by local component suppliers. Moving on to Europe, there were greater challenges to the MUP sector across the continent in general than in the USA market. We see higher inflation and lower year-on-year -year economic growth. This is substantially due to the war in Ukraine, which has led to other issues like increased costs and to the supply of energy. This makes the future of the market less certain. Having said that, revenue growth in the first quarter of 2023 is still strong among the manufacturers, with an increase of 35% in Europe reported by one of the majors based there. To put that into a rental perspective, Germany-based Zeppelin Rental published full year 2022 revenues of 666 million euros. That's up 16%. Peter Gertzman, chairman of the management board of the Zeppelin Group said, the result was remarkable considering the Ukraine war and its effects. Along with the challenges in the political situation in some markets, the highly dynamic pricing and persistent supply bottlenecks. Sticking with Germany, BBI, the German Association for Sales and Rental of Construction Equipment, Distributors and Rental Companies, said that the shortage of skilled workers will be the central issue going forward. And this comes despite efforts to recruit and train employees, and it will not be possible to meet requirements. Therefore, it will be vital to increase productivity and to optimise processes and digitisation um, to help alleviate the problem, said the organisation. The UK joins Germany, along with France and the Netherlands, as one of the European countries to be included in IPAS rental reports, with, which has the lowest uh, overall growth in the continent. According to the UK's Construction Products Association, CPA, the UK is currently one of the worst performing economies in Europe. Construction output is expected to fall by 4.7% in 2023, before recovering slowly in 2024 with growth of 0.6%. Brexit has also caused challenges. According to the president of Skyjack, Ken McDougall, Brexit has been a pain, especially for a company like Skyjack that has traditionally used the UK as its central distribu distribution point for mainland Europe. Now, says McDougall, due to the bureaucracy caused by Brexit, this arrangement no longer makes sense and has seen the manufacturer looking at other opportunities for a base in Europe. While there are no plans to move out of the UK, as it remains a major market and important part of the distribution channel, McDougall said Skyjet may set up a secondary EU distribution point um, somewhere there. The outlook for construction acti activity in France in 2023, says um, SICA, the commitment for Europe, the Committee for European Construction Equipment, is subdued due to low economic growth of 0.1% and elevated inflation and high interest rates. Nevertheless, the rental sector is reporting strong potential. For example, Loxham's new major international sporting events unit has already won a contract for temporary power supply for the Paris 2024 Olympic and Paralympic Games. And the company believes 2023 and 2024 will be watershed years for this new unit, thanks to the Rugby World Cup um, in France in 2023 and the Paris 2024 Olympic and uh, Paralympic Games, as I just mentioned. In last year's report, there was major uncertainty surrounding the Nordic countries due to the war in Ukraine with the International Monetary Fund, the IMF, stating that neighbouring economies in particular will, will grapple with disrupted trade and supply chains. Since then, Finland has joined NATO, with its Secretary General, Jens Scholtenberg, saying it was looking forward to welcoming Sweden as soon as possible, and said Finland joining NATO was good for Nordic security. Despite the challenges, Nordic countries have been home to some of the strongest markets in recent years. Demonstrating this is rental giant Loxham again. In the company's most recent financial results, in which it reported a 10% increase in revenues in 2022, uh, it said sales in the Nordic region were driving that result. According to Off Highway Research's Global Market Review, the strongest growth in global construction equipment sales of 22, 2022 was seen in the larger markets of Southern Europe, 
most notably Italy, which saw sales rise by an impressive 18% and Spain experienced 17% growth. To put that into context, construction equipment sales across Europe rose by 4% in 2022 to 217,000 units. Seeker's 2023 annual report also names Italy as the strongest market, market in Europe in, in 2022, with activity levels reaching close to the peak levels achieved before the financial cr crash in 2008. Spain has seen the imp implementation of the country's recovery and resilience plan, which is set to boost growth in investment, especially in the construction sector. And the country is also seeing significant investments in areas such as railway, housing and development of sustainable cities. As I previously mentioned, the strength of the specialist mute manufacturers, which are heavily concentrated in Europe, is notable. There have been major acquisitions in Europe over the last 18 months, particularly among the major producers of utility related access used to maintain power lines and street lighting. Of the Chinese manufacturers, there is great potential in Europe too. We have seen examples of subsidiaries set up in the continent in recent years. One footnote here is that the tariffs in the USA has led to China-based manufacturers increasing their, their efforts in Europe, with more equipment that might, have gone, uh, that might have gone to the USA becoming available in Europe. At Bauma in Germany last October, Chinese manufacturers at the show were vocal about the window of opportunity that existed for them in Europe while their equipment was readily available, compared to the lead times quoted by European and US-based manufacturers. It was clear in their eyes this was the chance to prove they could deliver not just on kit, but on after-sales service provision in Europe too. China-based companies have been mentioned a number of times in this report. So let's turn to the market itself. While well, China has faced well-documented recent challenges with COVID, resulting in a zero-tolerance zero approach and widespread lockdowns, which have now been lifted. The end of 2022 also saw a decline in confidence, confidence among construction buyers in the country, with the Purchasing Managers Index, the PMI, dropping to a score of 54.4 in December and 58.2 in October 2022. China has also seen a slump in its housing market as the country's leaders tighten up rules on borrowing to build. But the market is now expected to revive as China eases rules on borrowing again in the hope of arresting a decline in property sales. Ratings agencies Moody's said it expected China's economic growth to accelerate modestly to 4% this year from 3% last year. The China mute market continues to expand strongly with fleet growth still up to 40% year on year. However, the view is that this will only continue for the next couple of years, after which the curve could drop, dram could drop dramatically as the market starts to become saturated. Competition is already intense in both manufacturing and rental, with Chinese OEMs now dominating the market. And on the rental side, there are now three China-based rental companies in the top 10 of Access International's Access 50 listing of the world's largest rental companies compared to five years ago when there were none. And the total fleet size of the Chinese rental companies in the top 25 of the listing stands at 230,000 units compared to 142,000 last year and zero in 2017. Reports from the country suggest that competition between the major rental players has helped to drive down rates in the country to historic lows, which is one of the factors demonstrating the country's access market is far from mature. As Xu Gongshu, founder of Dingley points, founder of Dingley points out in a recent Access International interview, the difference between a mature and immature rental market comes down to three factors. In a mature market, companies follow the life cycle profit model, which combines rental rates, residual value, value and total cost of ownership. This is compared to the current Chinese rental model, which is based primarily on the cost of new equipment, with the lowest cost units winning out over all else. Some manufacturers in the country are moving to a rental model themselves, and they rent units to rental companies rather than selling them. On the other hand, China is developing its full electric equipment sector very quickly, 
new construction sites tend to automatically incorporate the charging infrastructure required by all terrain scissors and booms compared to Europe, which varies, but overall is seriously lacking in the infrastructure uh, that is required, and the USA, which is overall another step behind. No matter, the move away from hydraulic drive to direct electric drive is now commonplace across the world, and ultimately, alternative fuel sources will become the norm internationally too, however long that may take. Well, that's it from me, and thanks for watching. Hello everyone, and thank you for joining our webinar. As every year, Daga Carlisle is preparing the IFAF new rental market reports, which look at the evolution of main markets indicators in various regions, Europe, North America, and China. My name is Jana Hova, Senior Analyst at Daga Carlisle, and will present an extract of one of our country reports. The estimates and market vision presented in the new rental market reports are developed using a methodology consisting in triangulating data coming from in-depth interviews with market players, rental companies, but also new manufacturers and other market experts, such as suppliers of manufacturers and associations representatives. We also use secondary information related to construction, rental statistics and other macroeconomic indicators. IPAF has been partnering with Dakar Carlisle since 2009. We thus now rely on 14 years of historical MUP rental market data. And over the years, Dakar Carlisle has shown an excellent track record and forecast accuracy. The IPAF MUP rental market reports offer an in depth analysis of the MUP rental markets in Europe, North America, and China. For each region, Dakar Carlisle analyzes market revenues and growth trends, fleet sizes and expected evolutions, fleet mix including alternative energy penetration trends. We also examine rental companies' investment fluctuations and observe operational indicators like utilization rates, retention periods, payback periods and rental rates evolution. These indicators, trends and forecasts are extremely useful for companies active in the market. Rental companies, of course, but also equipment manufacturers, suppliers and even investment funds as they empower these companies to take informed decisions whether investments, plannings, growth strategies or business orientation. So today we will present you an extract of the German report with a look back on the year 2022 and forecast for 2023 and 2024. Before starting, Daka Carlisle and IPAF would like to thank all companies who kindly participated to the project preparation and estimates development. The German new rental market grew beyond expectations in 2022 and has now reached or surpassed pre-pandemic levels. Let's take a closer look at market indicators and how they evolved in the couple, past couple of years. As forecast in last year's report edition, after moderate growth in 2021, the German new rental business recovery accelerated in 2022. New rental revenue rose by 7% and reached almost 790 million euros an unprecedented level, driven mainly by increase in rental rates and demand from the construction sector. The fragmented market structure still favors a higher than European average on cross higher rate. Although this latter went down in 2022 as rental companies expanded fleets. Outlooks are positive, but more moderate with revenue growth rates ranging at around three or four percent for the years to come. Before reviewing fleet size, I would like to remind that we exclude low-level access equipment from our scope. In 2022, MUB rental fleet size went beyond 62,000 units. MUB procurement was still challenged by supply chain difficulties and limited equipment availability for some manufacturers. Considering these obstacles, rental companies secured their purchases by placing orders months in advance or turned further to alternative brands who could ensure shorter delivery lead times. 
This fleet management strategy allowed for both back orders and new purchases to be delivered in 2022, translating into a 4% fleet size growth rate. Fleet size will keep expanding in 2023, although at a more moderate level. In 2022, mu utilization rate increased by 1% point to 66%. The main explanation to such an evolution lie in flourishing activity and growing demand in both construction and non-construction end sectors. While supply chain issues continue to moderately restrict the fleet size growth and therefore increasing the pressure on existing fleet. Utilization could increase further in 2023 as reasonable optimism prevails, while fleet size develops at a more moderate pace. In 2022, and after two years of continuous decrease, rental rates have increased significantly. A 4% growth rate is reported across the board under the influence of several factors, such as rising demand, but also overall price increase driven by both inflationary pressure and increasing new purchase prices. This growth allowed for an improvement of the average revenue per unit close to its pre-pandemic levels. Rental companies now intend to keep increasing rental rates in 2023, although they expect it to be more moderate. We just took a close look at the German market, but I would like to share some general trends regarding the rest of the world. Europe as a whole experienced an 8% increase, revenue increase in 2022 having now gone beyond its pre-pandemic levels. The market growth has been driven by sustained demand, some fleet expansion, and most certainly rental rates growth at a times of heavy inflation. Outlooks for 2023 are moderately optimistic and further rental revenue growth is, is expected. While the shortages on raw materials are still a concern, rental companies have found ways to deal with it and temporarily increase their retention period. In parallel, some lead times progressively get shorter and their sourcing strategies evolve. The main remaining uncertainty is linked to macroeconomic outlooks, inflation evolution and a fear of recession in some countries in the European region. This being said, market players acknowledge that demand is there and anticipate some good months ahead, as already experienced in the first months of 2023. In terms of equipment trends, the market continues to see the penetration of electric engines growing in both scissors and boom fleets. The North American market experienced another year of significant growth in 2022, with double digits revenue and fleet size growth rates. Despite a stronger than expected COVID and lockdown impact in 2022, China market kept developing at a significant level. Chinese MUG rental fleet size now exceeds 450,000 units. Outlooks are moderately positive as market keeps expanding. Driven by continued fleet expansion and utilization rate evolving around 70%. Globally, most rental companies continue forward planning a switch towards greener equipment as sustainability remaining a key topic of the years to come. We hope that this short presentation answered some of the questions you had. More elements will be available in the IPAF new rental reports, which will be released early June. More specifically, you have the options of ordering several report packages. The global reports and all countries, global reports and one country, or individual country reports, including the North American report. All the information is gathered on the web link shown here. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you very much to Ewan and Jana for those great presentations and insight. Hopefully, you saw from Jana's update, the individual country reports go into quite a bit of detail. And I would hope that you see that if you're in a particular region and you've not had these reports in the past, uh, they will be of use 
to you for investment decisions, financial decisions and budgeting aid. As I mentioned before, the reports are available to IPAF members that are rental companies, manufacturers, dealers, distributors and suppliers free of charge. And they're available to all other IPAF members and non-members for a fee. To IPAF members, the individual country reports are as little as €174. Euros. So thank you once again, a massive thank you to Palazzani, our sponsors, for this webinar. Um, and I will speak to you soon. Thank you. Bye-bye.